news, everybody. Yesu drops a new firmware update for the FTX1. This is the 20256.zip. There will be a link in the video description, but if you end up with the firmware update information, you will find that too. So what's in this bad boy? Well, a number of files for the different logic bodies that are in the radio. But what is in it? Well, it adds APRS message functionality. Shout out to KM4ACK. I'm sure he's excited about that. It supports the ATOS 120 auto tune. That is fantastic. It says Optima, so you got to have the Optima. Displays the selected HF antenna connector number at the top of the screen. Very nice. Improved APRS beacon reception sensitivity. Also, shout out to Cam4ACK. Ficked an issue with the GPS coordinates not being displayed correctly. Excellent. Improved narrow band, or sorry, improved noise blanker characteristics and fix the issue with volume not being adjustable while CW message or voice screen is displayed. Fixed issue with the sub side receiving sound being output during split operation. Fixed issue with setting menu not being backed up to SD card properly and other minor fixes. That is a much better drop of what's in this versus the last firmware update we got. So very excited for that. It gonna, it's going to walk through the process of basically telling you you got to reset the transceiver after you do the update. So okay we got to go to a different file for that and let me show you where that's at this is the firmware upgrade manual this will also be linked in the video description but the basic thing is you're going to take that zip file unzip it and where you're going to place those individual files in the root directory of the ftx1 so you will need an sd card that has been formatted by the ftx1 at least that's how i did it i loaded an appropriate sized card and yeah the largest this thing can take is 32 gigs so Go buy yourself a really cheap 32 gig card or go through your drunk drawer, I guess, and get one. Anyway, you're going to place the SFL files under the FTX1 directory. Just bare right in there, kind of as it shows right here. And then you're going to place it into the radio. And when you pull up that view, you're going to see a lot of SFL files. Like I said, you're just going to unzip the contents of that zip directly into the FTX directory and then eject it from your computer do it safely and securely hit eject and then place it inside your ftx all right we're going to long press we're going to go over to the right a couple of times under extension setting we're going to scroll over to soft version and yeah this is an old version of the software here so we're going to make sure we do an update to that check that before go ahead and doing the whole process because you don't need to and then under sd card we're going to do a firmware update so let's click that Whoops, important step. If you have version 1.00, then you need to start at step four. Uh, if the main firmware version is different than version 1.00, proceed to step 11. And what is this having you do? Well, step four is having you simultaneously press some buttons and then go in and do a firmware update via this firmware kind of splash screen on boot. You need to make sure you do that first if you are on version one. So make sure you follow this directly. Make sure you do not click those check marks and then hit update. Once you finish that, then you can go through and do the rest of it, which is to go through the extensions. So yeah, as mentioned, go to extension, SD card, firmware update. It's going to do some file checkitudes. And then make sure you select all of these and then hit update. And then let it do its thing. If you didn't know this about firmwares, do not let this radio restart. Do not turn it off. Do not power it off. Make sure your battery's charged. To be extra safe, Put it on a 12 volt system of some kind of 12 volt source so that you have no problem with the radio resetting because this is what could cause a radio to brick itself and by brick meaning that you're no longer going to be able to do firmware it will not do radio things it will have to go back to the factory of where it was developed likely um, yesu america in cyprus to do a reset and that can be costly timely and just don't bother be safe make sure it doesn't lose power Now that the radio has reset itself, it does say you need to do a factory reset on this. And there's a quick way of doing it. So you hold down power to turn it off. And yes, it makes you think that you're, you know, um, you're good because it resets itself. But if you hold down back and fine at the same time while powering the radio on.
full reset. See, color reset and all that stuff. So there you go, factory reset. We're now done, right? Well, if you only have a field radio, yes, you're done. But there are also upgrade potentials for the Optima kit. So I'm going to hook up my Optima, and I'm going to show you what that's like. It's not very difficult. But yes, you need to do the reset regardless. So do that before doing the Optima, as per the Yesu instructions. And we don't violate from the Yesu instructions. You got that? You got that. All right, I got my Optima connected. Let's uh, let's do a long press on the function. And we'll go down to forward, forward, extension settings. And we'll go to SD card. And we will go to firmware update. Ah, look at there's a new opt thing. So we're going to unclick display. Make sure it's all off. Only have opt selected. And then hit update. And yes, you will only see that when you have the Optima connected to your FTX field. While this finishes up, we're going to go ahead and disconnect it, and we're going to explore some of the new firmware. Now, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to hold the power button down, and then I'm going to hold down back and fine and do the power again because we've already reset it, so it doesn't matter if we do it again, and we should be all reset. Yep, all set. So let's take a look at this firmware. All right, so how did uh, Yesu do? Well, I did a full reset, so we've done the Optima and the updated patch for all the computer components, FPGAs, whatever you want to call it, inside the unit. A total of five firmware updates. Um, it is now reset back to just a you know the color standard default, which is you know not my favorite. So I'm gonna go actually back here, and we're gonna change color. We're gonna make that my favorite, my white. Yeah, there we go. And I got to make the color, got to get that uh, Yesu orange. That's that's what we're looking for there. And yeah, I am already getting APRS packets, but you can see nothing's happening. And so the first thing you got to do is you got to turn on the APRS modem. So let me show you how to do that. Long press function. Go to the forward button again, forward button, APRS settings. Then under APRS settings, done, click done. And you got to turn the modem on. Right now, it is always set to default off. And I usually will run it on the sub like that. Also, your modem type, this will default at 9600 BPS. That will not work for two meters. You need to have it on 1200. So go back in here, set that to 1200, and it will start working immediately. Why that defaults to 9600, I'm guessing, is for the Japanese market, which they largely use 70 centimeters. So you can already hear the beeping, hopefully we are getting beacons and we'll just wait a second we'll get another one and there we go we got a pop-up and it gives us a little information about the individual the station all that good stuff so that is working right perfect all right great because frankly this wasn't even picking up um, other stations like it it really was not very sensitive for aprs which was pretty frustrating because that was one of the the big features that we were looking for for this so great job we're happy about that all right in my area, there's a lot of APRS, so uh, we may have to turn this off for a second to show you how to do this. But I'm going to hold down function again. And now we see APRS list, S list for station, and M list for message. Let's click on S list. And those are all the stations we're, we're seeing. And they'll start populating as you go through it. So I can go in here and, okay, another one pops up. That's the guy I clicked on. Let's say I wanted to reply to him. So I'd hit reply. I've already been doing this for two minutes and I already realized we're gonna have to do a couple settings for my sanity. Uh, let's, ah! Let's go back to APRS settings. And we gotta do a couple of things. We're gonna go to uh, AF mute is on, <laughs> on. And let's see, can we change some of these settings here? Oh, I got to add my call sign. And we're portable. I almost always run dash seven. Mm, beacon? No. That's nice that they have the beacon. We'll, we'll play around with that in the future. Got to turn that ringer off on receive. So I went to ringer rx off we don't want to hear that messages though i do want to see uh, if i send a packet i do want to see that too but i don't want to get all these beeps from all the stations that keep coming through so let's go back we'll go to station list and yeah tons of stations so let's just pick one of them i don't know and we'll say reply 
Now, the cursor's up there at the top, which hopefully you can see, and I'm going to hit the function button to edit that, and I'm just going to say test. Or let's just say hi. And then I'm going to transmit it. Okay, it was received. That doo-doo-doo -doo implies that it was sent. It went through a digipeter. The whole nine yards is beeping multiple times because it's going to get, I'm going to hit multiple digipeters, and they all just digipeted that message. So that's good. So we got a whole thing went out there for a message. Very nice. Now I went back to APRS filter under APRS settings, and under pop-up, that's too long for me, this 10 seconds. So I'm going to drop that down to 10. Um, my packet is off. I don't want that on. I'll leave that. Ringer, like I said, I had that there. Message function, we can leave that alone. Or message filtering. Station list, we can we can receive all those. That's fine. You you may want to sort that out later. And list setting by time. So yeah, there you go. Okay, good. Now something else they added, they improved NB characteristics, which is noise blanker. So I'm I'm kind of curious what that means. So let's let's go in uh, back to noise blanker, and we'll bring that up a bit. And let's see if we can find, so we can, great. We got it on the function knob now. Let's see if we can find a station that'll be a little bit loud enough for here. I, I've got quite a bit of RFI due to some ongoing issues. Now, this uh, new narrow, this new noise blanker feature, I don't know what to expect here, so we're going to listen to it a little bit. That's noise blanker off. Not much of a difference to me. No, not much different. Here's a DNR on. Just add them. Add them to the back. DNR's good, although quiet. It'd be nice if there was a button to record, uh, like, an easier one instead of having to go in here. I don't think there is. Yeah. And we'll stop. All right, so what do we think, everybody? I think this update is uh, exactly what was needed. I think that there's probably still some more work that they can do, and the more they do, the better it's gonna be over time. There is a lot to like with this radio. The initial complaints, I think, were all software-related. I felt that the APRS thing had to be fixed, and I guess Yesu agreed as well. So there you have it. It is working. I think the firmware update functionality here is very straightforward. It's very easy to do. If you have one of these, you should definitely go and do that because it will uh, it will unlock more features for your radio, which is exactly what you want. So I'd love to hear your comments, what your thoughts are on the FTX, but also if you do end up doing the firmware, what are your thoughts on some of the improvements there? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. And until I talk to you again, 73.